and I just got an LOI sign on deal today where their note is actually overdue and they haven't changed it out yet. But they're looking and they're holding, you know, a four and a half, four and a quarter, five percent interest rate on their on their notes. And now it's time to refinance. And they're sitting here going, oh, my gosh, my deal doesn't cash flow at the now eight percent interest rate that they're offering me today i need to get out of this deal today's guest is both quite young and a pretty experienced real estate investor at the same time by now and i first learned about him a few years ago from damian lupo friend of the show here when he basically said hey this is someone that you really ought to meet in the real estate field and he was here with us on the show a few years ago he is the best-selling author of the book skip the flip in fact that had so much success that he wrote a sequel skip the flip too and one specialization of his is in the RV and boat storage real estate space. And I've come to know him to have a sharp eye for opportunities to value add property. So it's great to welcome back to GRE, Hayden Crabtree. Keith, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be here and chat with you. Talk to us about the state of the market and or the best real estate opportunities that you see today from your vantage point, because we've have, you know, really a bunch of pretty extreme metrics lately. We had high mortgage interest rates and higher prices, but we also have higher rents and, and high occupancy. So talk to us about the state of a market and where you might see opportunities, Hayden. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a great question. Everybody wants to talk about the state of the market. Um, I can't remember if the last time I was on it was before. I know it was around the time that, you know, the uh, the pandemic had hit. And uh, one thing that happened out of that in 2020 is a lot of big groups, you know, Wall Street uh, type groups, family office type groups, is they all wanted to get into self-storage as an asset class because a lot of people see self-storage as a recession resistant asset and so many people were predicting you know the massive recession that was to follow you know in the summer and fall of 2020 that really never occurred as we all know it went the exact opposite direction but so much money went into the storage space that self-storage uh prices went to an all-time high and I talk a lot about self-storage investments. I think it's the same for commercial, but you know that's specifically where I focus is in the self-storage and boat and RV storage sector. And what had come out of that, you know, uh, out of that bubble of a lot of people going in there is just extremely low cap rates, which resulted in extremely high prices and all-time demand. And it was really hard to buy. It was a great time to be a net seller. It was a really bad time to be a net buyer. Uh, but what I think I'm seeing right now in the market after you know we've gone through multiple multiple fed rate hikes prime going all the way up to seven plus percent uh, right now what i'm seeing in the market is a lot of sellers a lot of property owners who have a note coming due and i just got an loi sign on a deal today where their note is actually overdue and they haven't you know changed it out yet but they're looking and they're holding you know a four and a half four and a quarter five percent interest rate on their on their notes and now it's time to refinance because they got three year balloons or whatever it was. And they're sitting here going, oh, my gosh, my deal doesn't cash flow at the now 8% interest rate that they're offering me today. I need to get out of this deal. And I think that that's where a lot of opportunity is. I think it's no different than how a lot of people got in trouble inside of you know the 2008 is just not financing for the long term. So I think there's a lot of opportunity in the commercial space right now for uh, buyers who, who bought in 2020, 2021 at high prices, who got 12, 24 month, 36 month loans. Maybe it was an interest only loan. Maybe it was an amortizing loan. Maybe it was a loan that was interest only that rolled over to an amortization schedule. But those kind of property owners that currently their income supports their current loan, but it would not support a loan on the you know 8% interest. When they double their interest rate, it's not going to support it because a lot of the lenders that I'm talking to right now have raised their DSCR standards. I've heard 1.3 as a minimum, 1.35 as a minimum. And it's really hard to meet those unless you have added significant value to the property that you purchase. So a lot of people who bought these turnkey deals that cash flowed and met the DSCR requirements at the older interest rates, they're not going to do so the same today. And I think that's a really, you know, kind of big space to be looking out for or kind of an opportunity to be looking out for Really, in any commercial you know asset, I think the resident residential market's a little bit different, but that's what I'm seeing on the commercial side as an opportunity uh, right now. You're helping solve these people's problem for them when they have short-term financing 
or balloon payments coming due. A balloon payment basically means you need to make the big lump sum payment for the balance of your mortgage loan. You need to sell that deal or refinance that deal before that happens because a lot of people don't have several hundred thousand dollars or several million dollars worth of cash sitting around. So you're solving that problem for them before that alarm blares on that balloon payment, basically. Tell us about how you're finding these deals. No hard feelings between all the brokers or agents listening to the show, but I'm a big proponent of off-market deals. I'll, I'll figure out who owns the property. I'll reach out to them, whether that's you know trying to find out their phone number and texting them, calling them, sending them a letter, uh, trying to get creative. You know, I've heard of different people uh, getting really creative with some of the things they do to spark people's attention, but just finding ways to kind of stand out. You know, I, I just got a call off of a letter I sent last week, and it hit the guy's inbox. I guess yesterday. And, you know, he said, I wasn't even thinking about selling, but now that you kind of mention it, my partner's getting older. I live out of the out of state. Uh, it would be great if you guys would end up selling this deal. And that's kind of a different situation. But what I have seen a lot of, you know, on the deals that I am seeing is financing problems. And that's a reason for selling. But there's a lot of motivation out there. You know, I mean, I think demographically, a lot of the uh, real estate, commercial real estate assets are held by the older generation, held by the older generation, I should say. And, uh, you know, they're looking to retire. They're thinking a lot about retirement. I'm hearing very, very consistently about how does this sale impact my retirement, right? And I think that that's an opportunity uh, in and of itself. But a lot of the deals, to answer your question, are off-market deals, trying to get in contact directly with the owner. Well, you do analyze so many deals, ones that you end up putting into your portfolio and ones that you learn aren't worth it. And since you were last here, one important role that you've really filled in the industry is that a few years ago, you set out to build the world's best deal analyzer, helping everyday investors leverage some of your knowledge in analyzing all these deals and really helping people with a platform called My Property Stats. So tell us about what you're doing now are setting out to build the world's best deal analyzer. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. I am not a software guy by any sense of the means and never really did I want to be. But in 2020, when it was a good time to be a net seller, I sold some of my properties. I, I sold um, 11 self-storage facilities in five different states with seven different investors. And I got multiple, multiple offers. But really what I learned, because I was kind of the finance guy that put all these deals together, what I learned in that process is my investors want to know what kind of a return are they going to earn on the on the money that they gave me to invest for them? And I think that's a really fair question. And I sat down and put my head in a bunch of spreadsheets for months on months. And I'm like, I'm a real estate investor so that I don't have to work in spreadsheets each and every single day. And I kind of saw this problem and looked around in the industry of like, okay, how are real estate investors tracking the performance of their investment? Because we have a lot, there's thousands of property management companies, right? You can there's so many different property management companies. There's probably 10 property management companies for every single different kind of real estate. But I, I looked around and I said, where is the investment analysis in the real estate world? And there's some other, there's some big companies out there that are really focused around, you know, helping you raise money. Uh, but all of the, and, and then, you know, talk about what kind of returns your investors are earning, which was the goal. But I went out there and they're all for Wall Street companies. They're all for people with billion dollar portfolios and the minimum ticket price I could find on any of these softwares, the minimum was $25,000 a year and the max and, and, and to get something what would really solve your problem was at least $100,000 a year. And for most people, $100,000 a year isn't really a viable option, you know, because it would just completely kill a lot of your cash flow. And so I kind of set out on this mission to where I wanted to build a platform where, you know, if you own, if you own stocks or you know, mutual funds, whatever, you can log into your Charles Schwab app or Robinhood app or whatever you use, and you can instantly see, boom, here's my money. Here's how I've done this month. Here's how I've done this week. Here's what I've done in the last year. Here's how this investment's doing. And I really wanted to build something like that for real estate investors to help them understand, okay, great, your property may be 100% occupied, but how is the $70,000 you put as a down payment on the property actually doing compared to the other options? So that was kind of the goal and mission of my property stats at the start. It is to help real estate investors understand their current portfolio. But in that process, we had to go through and build a deal analysis tool. So I said, well, we might as well go ahead and put together this and launch this to help new real estate investors go through and say, okay, hey, I'm looking at the property at 123 Main Street. It's a duplex that rents for $1,400 each side. I can buy it for $150,000. How good of an investment is that? And so that's the deal analysis part that we put out. And personally, I think it's the best deal analyzer in the world. I've looked at a lot of different deal analyzers. 
We custom built this one to make it easy and flexible to analyze any kind of property, whether it's self-storage like I analyze, whether it's a single family house, whether it's a multifamily, whatever kind of property it is, you can analyze it. And there's a lot of cool things in there like due diligence Dropbox. You can keep all of your documents in one place. You can copy a link and you can share the deal with your lenders or partners immediately. And they get all the documents, they get all the numbers. So it's just a really cool platform that takes a lot of the headache out of dealing with spreadsheets, sending multiple emails back and forth. So that was on the deal analysis side. And then we went on and we actually built out the investment management platform, which is where you can put your properties in there. And it'll tell you, hey, you know, you've earned a, you thought you were going to earn a 15% IRR on this property and you're actually at 27%. Congratulations, right? And it'll start to help you do those kinds of scenarios or really just seeing your portfolio so you can know and understand Hey, is the property over at, you know, 789 Sycamore a dog and you should really sell it and get your equity back and go put it in this other deal you're analyzing. So that was the goal of that platform. And again, I'm not, you know, a software guy by any means, but I just saw a problem in my own business and couldn't find anything that would solve it. And I thought other people were probably having the same problem. Yeah, both Andrea and I have interfaced with MyPropertyStats.com a fair bit. And we like that it does an awful lot of things for you. So for you as an investor, it basically helps you be better organized with your existing portfolio and then make more informed decisions in the future. And in fact, you can approach things with future buys and try to determine, all right, what's the most that I should possibly pay for this property to meet my cash flow and IRR goals? So imagine approaching something that way rather than looking at a property and then trying to make the numbers work and, and try to settle for a certain cash on cash return. Instead, enter your, for example, cash on cash return and then determine what's the most that you should possibly pay for this property and have that be your criteria approach that way. Yeah, that, that's a great point because I think that a lot of investors need to be goal driven and have fundamentals, right? We shouldn't just look at a deal, say to ourselves, feels like a good deal. We should say to ourselves instead as investors that, hey, I'm investing to earn a 10% cash on cash return or whatever your metrics are, right? I'm investing to triple my equity in five years or whatever your metrics as an investor are, you should invest to achieve those metrics. And for the most part, I would say 90% of deals have a price at which you can hit your goals. 10% of deals, for whatever reason, the income will just never cover the expenses. It'll never be a good deal for whatever reason. Uh, but the cool thing, we call it the perfect purchase price calculator. It's kind of going back to that 123 Main Street duplex example. If they're asking 150000 you know, and you say, well, at 150000 I'm only hitting a 3% cash on cash, whatever. You can go in, tell the system you want to earn a 10% cash on cash. Tell it to find your perfect price and it'll go through it. It may tell you, you can pay $132,650 to hit your perfect price. And you go to yourself, well, I can make the offer. And if they accept it, I'll hit my goals. And if not, I'll go on to the next deal. So it really works in the way of kind of like a, a CRM for any salespeople out there where all of your deals are stored in one place, easy to access from any device. So yeah, it's, it's a cool platform. I'm in it every single day as an active real estate investor, both for looking at my existing portfolio you know, and, and the new ones that I'm trying to buy. Yeah. So I kind of think of there being two main roles there. You have your investment manager, which is to help analyze your returns on properties that you already own. And then secondly, is your deal analyzer. That is for the potential buys that you might want to make and evaluate in the future. And like you said, that's not just for single family rental homes up to fourplexes that can help you analyze self-storage deals and raw land and a lot of other asset types. Yeah, and it's not just you know properties are already existing. I analyze development deals. I analyze deals that I'm going to buy and do expansions on, value add deals. You can analyze all kinds of deals and all kinds of strategies inside of that and get a true apples to apples comparison for wherever it is that you're placing your money. Because at the end of the day, we're all just investors, right? A lot of us here are tied to real estate because we think that is the best investment. But I like to know for sure that I have hundred thousand dollars that I'm looking to put to work. Is it going to work in the best possible format for me in this real estate deal? So I'm a big numbers guy. Even if you're not a big numbers guy, you know, you still want to know that you're buying a deal with positive cash flow in my property stats can make it easy to make sure that you're buying a deal, you know, that's going to be an asset rather than a liability. Real estate is such a fragmented and inefficient market from a lot of perspectives. For example, someone with a, a stock and mutual fund portfolio 
Maybe they can use an app like Robinhood to look on their phone and say, hey, I had a great day. I was up 1.2% today. Well, in real estate, it's more difficult to do that, but this gets you closer to that. It helps you realize what your returns are. It might help you identify a lagging performer in your portfolio, whereas otherwise you wouldn't be able to do that. And it really just helps you organize things all in one place. You can store all your contacts and contact information, even store all your warranties for a certain property in one place. And you know, hey, I could have used something like this in the past. I mean, I know my habits from when I was a real estate investor early on. If I would have a water heater replaced and I got the warranty card with it, I didn't pay much attention to it. I just threw it away, you know, because I didn't really know how to efficiently organize it. So this can just help mentally declutter your real estate investor life. Yeah. And that's really the goal, you know, whether it's uh, going through and mapping out all your different critical dates for properties you own, like, hey, when's my property tax due? When's my insurance renewing? Whether it's going through and storing your operating agreements for partnerships you have in the cloud. So you always have access to them. You'll always know where they are. Whether it's when you're going to sell a property, you say to yourself, well, I know I got a survey on there. The buyer's asking me for a survey. Let me go. And for me personally, I was spending an hour because I have four different emails, two different laptops. I'd spend an hour going through all the different files, trying to find the survey. And it was just so inefficient. I think one of the great things about real estate investors is we're action takers. We're not, for the most part, very organized individuals. We're always, yes, that sounds great. Let's do it. Let's go forward and buy that deal. We're really bad at like sitting down, taking pictures of the receipt storing them, creating a system and everything. And my property stats is just trying to bring you one step closer uh, to that. You know, So you can really focus on enjoying your, being a real estate investor rather than dealing with all the headaches and frustrations that come with being a real estate investor. Because they're going to be there. The question is just how do you handle them? It's probably easier to handle and you'll have better, clear headspace and bandwidth when you are at least better organized. Yes, action-oriented real estate investors just want to plow through and sometimes leave a mess in their wake. Now, if you're a new real estate investor, this can also help you learn the numbers somewhat. For new real estate investors, I think it is important for you to not rely on another piece of software to go ahead right from the beginning and help you analyze your deals. For example, to start out with, I think it's a good idea for you as a real estate investor to understand that your cash on cash return, which is a really important metric, is simply your annual cash flow divided by your cash invested. But once you have that one committed to memory and that's automatic, and then you're thinking in those terms, sure, take a piece of software like this to help figure that out for you and make some pretty charts and comparisons for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, at the basis of everything, particularly when we're talking about investing your money, you want to have a firm understanding of, of what everything means, right? Going and looking at IRRs, equity multiple, cash on cash, yield on cost, all of these different metrics is great. But if you don't understand what that data is telling you, then you might as well not even look at it. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of learning what the metrics are, calculating their self by hand. And then once you got a firm understanding on that, go into a, a solution that is scalable, that will reduce your time spent on actually getting deals done is critically important. I think for, you know, once you have the basis, one of the things that I really like about the platform that I haven't seen anywhere else is the ability to analyze multiple scenarios. So for example, you could go in and you could take that 123 Main Street duplex, fill it out on what you think the loans are, but then you could go and you could just say, hey, let me just duplicate this real quick and analyze another scenario. What if I raise rents by 4% instead of the 2%? How does that impact my investment? What if I get the property management company X instead of property management company Y and how their different fee structures work, how is that going to impact my investment? So one of the things that I really like about it, whether you're a beginner or whether you are you know, on your hundredth rental property, is the ability to really make the best decision possible. But again, you have to know how all the numbers work and what the data is telling you before you start to really look at that data. Well, you're certainly having some success with my property stats with almost 12,000 people that have now signed up for this are really getting some good value in their life. What else should we know about property stats and why so many people are signing up for it and finding it useful? I think it's a unique product. I, I think that there's not a lot of people out there that, well, I'll say, I think kind of to my point earlier, a lot of the old school generation is starting to fade out, starting to sell their properties. 
And there's a lot more of the new generation of real estate investors, people who are 40 and under and understand the importance of knowing your data and, and, and appreciate and value technology as a solution in their life to make their life easier, to make their life more scalable, to make their life more organized, whatever it is. I think that there's a, just a new wave and that's why it's really never been a priority. Again, there's a lot of softwares out there, uh, but this is a new software to the space just in terms of the portfolio management for the average everyday real estate investor, the main street real estate investors instead of the Wall Street real estate. Yeah. Is there anything else that we should know about it? Uh, I mean, speaking to that fact for the main street guys is I just wanted to build it in a way to where it's there for everybody, right? You know, the goal of my property stats is not to charge people tens of thousands of dollars a year. It's to help everybody, no matter where you're at in your journey. We really have three different packages. Um, and the package is really built for wherever you are in your journey, from whether you're just starting out, you know, just sign up. We have a package that's $29 a month, super affordable, and you get access to everything, right? All the way up to the person who, you know, we have people with $100 million portfolios on the platform uh, and scaling all the way up to them. And for those people, again, super economical. Other companies would try to charge $20,000, $30,000. For those people, we charge $250 a month. So we're here in a way to be somebody on your team helping you make more money, not somebody saying, hey, we helped you make $2, you know, give us a dollar and 70 cents of it and you'll come out a little bit better and we'll take a lot of your money. So we're just building it for the everyday guy and, you know, we want to make it as affordable as possible. Uh, no matter where you are in your journey. Well, yeah, this can be a real asset to you as a real estate investor to finally get some things organized. If you are growing your portfolio, you have plans to grow your portfolio and project and see where you want to go. And, and Hayden, I really thank you for developing this for the industry. And then in addition for GRE followers, you've also done something special. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're happy to be partners with GRE. So for anybody who's listening to the show who wants to sign up, whether you are that person who has 100 rental properties or whether you're that person who's trying to buy their first rental property, you can go to mypropertystats.com slash GRE, sign up. And Keith here, my good friend, is giving everybody a 10% discount on their sign up. So yeah, if you're interested at all, just want to go check the platform out. If you want to get a demo of it and see it, we've got people who certainly uh, help you out or if you're just ready to dive in and give it a go mypropertystats.com forward slash GRE. Give that a try. Use coupon code GRE over there. That gives you 10% off of your first year. Thanks so much for doing that for us, Hayden. Any last thoughts? No, I mean, I just, you know, I'm thankful to be here. Thankful to be able to share, you know, both the insight into the market and also, you know, the My Property Stats product. I would say for anybody who's listening to this and goes, huh, you know, self-storage, I've wanted to learn more about that. I'm in single family or whatever and wants to learn more about self-storage. Definitely pick up a copy of my book, Skip the Flip. And I don't mean buy it. You can buy it off Amazon if you'd like the paperback, but I am giving it away absolutely free. Just go to HaydenCrabtree.com forward slash free book. Super happy to give that away. We've got 1,100 five-star reviews on Amazon, but my mission behind that book has just been to help other people learn how wealth creation in the commercial real estate space works. So I definitely am always a fan of helping people understand, you know, real estate should serve, should serve you, not you should serve your real estate portfolio. And I found that to be a lot easier uh, in the commercial real estate space rather than buying 100 rental properties. You know, and that's what I'm a big fan of self-storage about. So if you want to learn any more about that, pick up my book. And uh, otherwise, you know, it's just a pleasure to be here. Uh, Hayden, it's been a valuable chat. Thanks so much for coming onto the show. Thanks for having me.